Two wins down, two to go. The Seattle Sonics are just eight wins away from glory in this series. Hey, what's up, guys? You know the deal. Tookie here, back again with another episode. Seattle Sonics, my league. Again, you know the deal. Two wins down, as I mentioned. We made it past Cleveland in five, Utah in six. And now in this episode, despite this weird, weird playoff format, it's the battle that was probably going to happen no matter what. We take on the San Antonio Spurs in the Western Conference Final, we'll call it. Because, let's be honest, it's it's not a Western matchup. There's only one Eastern team left in Orlando. But don't you worry about it. Despite changes made at the start of the season, the team has still found itself at this point. Darrell Arnold, of course, league MVP, leading the way. Knock on wood. Lefteris Derikas is a... I mean, he's at like 99%. Let's find out the exact number, shall we? 99% healthy. The team is looking damn good. But whether or not our luck continues against the Spurs, that is the question. I want to take a look at their lineup before we get going on this series. Let's see what we're up against, as long as they can finally bring me to the right spot. And there we go. So... We start off with Murray, now 30 years old, still an 83 overall. Derek White backing him up now at 32 years old. They also have Leroy Clark, the 24-year-old. Spinal injury, that's fun. Yeah, he was a first-round pick back in 2024 out of UConn. Kind of glad he's not around. They got a good point guard depth, though. Shooting guard, Lonnie Walker and his amazing hair. Still at an 80 overall. Marcus Smart also currently injured, but good enough to play, kind of, sort of. And a forward, A.C. Galloway, who is a name that we've seen constantly. He was the third overall pick back in 2021, listed as a scoring machine, and I would say rightfully so. Averaged 24 points in the regular season, averaging 22 points here in the playoffs. Drew Murray behind him at 23 years old, 78 overall. Harry Baker, Barker, not Baker, Barker. There's extra letters there. One extra letter to be exact. Elite inside score. That's a 75 overall. Not bad. Dylan Nichols. My God, their depth is ridiculous. Power forward, 28-year-old J.P. Slaughter with George Sosa backing him up. And at center, Thierry Sonnet. The, I would imagine, French center. There you go. With a name like that, it'd be pretty weird if he was out of freaking LaSalle. But, yeah, Sané is there. Tristan Thompson's there, 36 years old. The bottom line is, this team has outrageous depth. They have a couple of really good players and a superstar in A.C. Galloway. It's, uh, it's going to be a very tough series. They are so ridiculously well-rounded that I I don't want to doubt our team and what they're capable of. I mean, obviously this is the furthest we've made it into the postseason thus far, but I am I am scared. As you see the matchup there, I mean, they won 64 games in the regular season, which really isn't surprising when you see the amount of depth that they have. Dorikas is back to 100%. I wanted to take a look at the direct matchup. Of course, they don't really show the overall matchup from here, though. But it is it is a toss-up. The Spurs have yet to lose a game this postseason, by the way, beating Washington and Atlanta. They are a perfect 8-0. Let's see if that continues. The time for talk, pretty much done with. Not much more to do other than to just sit back and see what happens in this series, do we have what it takes to get the job done and hand the Spurs their first loss of this postseason one game at a time, damn it, let's do this, game one is underway, we'll go fast him through the first where we were outscored 25-24, still a very close battle thus far, and at halftime, it's a 52-48 lead for San Antonio. Let's see if we can get back into this one here throughout the third. Slow start for both teams offensively. They're picking it up now, though. 
come on, we can do this, I believe in us, damn it, I don't like that we've, you know, yet to outscore them in a quarter, until now, only by one, but 27-26, it is a three-point lead for the Spurs as we begin the fourth. Is there a way back into this? And indeed there is. We're trading the lead down the stretch. Although San Antonio pulling away a little bit. We need the defense to show up. We're staying with them. It's neck and neck in terms of offensive output. We are tied 109 to 109 with 153 remaining. And if it didn't take six and a half years to jump into a game, I'd watch this one to see what the hell was going to happen. But for now, we'll slow up the sim, and we'll see how this goes. I am very concerned, and I think we... Nope! Oh my god, right when it looked like we botched it. Oh god! <laughs> Come on, somebody win it, somebody win it! No! <laughs> oh my god, no. 116 to 115. The Spurs win it by one absolute heartbreaker Darrell Arnold 37 points, Dorikas 19 points, 10 rebounds Bohannon just 14 points 14 points as well for Cato tremendously efficient offensively, Marsh played 42 minutes, 12 points, 9 rebounds McDaniels with 10 points McKinney with 6, Hopkins only 3 but 8 rebounds team comparison wise I mean it's just the shooting percentage Absolutely failed us. The three-pointers kept us in this game, but it just wasn't enough. Look at the fast break points, by the way. Good lord. That, that, okay, so number one, points in the paint, completely dominated. But also on the fast break, completely dominated. And maybe we look to uh, change up the strategies a little bit to limit that, because that's that's brutal. I mean, in terms of the rebounds, we were out-rebounded. It was relatively close. I'd say the steals made up for it. 25 fouls. Biggest lead was 6. Their biggest lead was 8. That's that's a tough call as far as how to handle that. Bohannon missed a jump shot right as the time expired. Arnold also missed it. So we had a couple of chances. We had a couple of chances. Murray hit the game-winning shot with 19 seconds left. And we had a couple of chances. Arnold and Bohannon both missed. Arnold missed the shot. We cut the rebound. And we still couldn't walk away with the victory. San Antonio still undefeated this postseason. But again, I think perhaps a coaching, uh, you know, a little bit of coaching adjustment might not be the worst way to go. And again, uh, with Darrell Arnold taking a look here, I mean, the, you know, the efficiency, the rating, he has been just tremendous. Bohannon I'm a little bit worried about. I'm a little bit worried about. He is underperforming. And we absolutely need him to step up. <sighs> McDaniel's still doing very well when he actually shoots the ball. I mean, he's, he's up on what he had been doing throughout the regular season. Same with A.J. Marsh, still doing very well. Dorikas, again, I mean, the efficiency rating, it's, it's dropped a bit. We need him to step up as well. So, I mean, Dorikas and Bohannon, if they can get their games under control, we're going to be looking pretty good. But I think, for the moment, I'm almost left with no choice. I'm going to drop Dorikas' minutes a little bit. I'm going to bring Hopkins up to 22. And as far as Bohannon's concerned, I'm going to drop him to about 38. And I'm going to bump up Kato's minutes, because Kato has been tremendous this postseason. No doubt about that. And then McKinney still doing very well. It's almost unfair to uh, not try to balance that out. Although McDaniels, of course, has done so well. Uh, you know what? Let's drop let's drop Hopkins to 20. And we'll bump McKinney and Cato up to 18 minutes each. And we'll give them a little bit more time. Oh, help defense is the one that I'm concerned about. As far as help defense and zone, I mean, run plays, considering we have the seven-second offense, you know, it's kind of, I mean, I wouldn't say irrelevant, but, you know, we'll say a third of the time's not a bad way to go. I'm almost tempted to bump that up as far as set plays are concerned. But ideally, we'd be on the break a little bit more frequently, 
Uh, point of emphasis is still fine. The offensive tempo, shoot it well. As far as offensive rebounding, that's that's where we have to focus on limiting transition for them. Rather than some crash and others get back, we have to focus on limiting their transition. And our defensive focus, I mean, it might not be worth it to change it completely, but protect the paint after what happened in that last game. It might be, you know, it might be a little bit much in terms of what we did. But I think we're good. And as far as defensive rebounding is concerned, we're on some crash, others run. I almost want to go all out in terms of rebounding, just because we know that they're a pretty damn good rebounding team. And as much as it would be nice to get the transition offense going a little bit more, it might be better just to try and protect the ball and then you know beat them with pull-up jumpers. But you know what? Let's let's see if we go defensive rebounding. Run in transition. You know, some crash others run. I'm torn as far as our defensive rebounding emphasis, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my gut on this one and I think I'm gonna stick with what it was. Although you know what? Screw it. Let's see what happens. Let's go run in transition. And we'll see what happens from there. So a couple of adjustments after game one. I didn't want to wait too long. Uh, maybe we're reacting a little bit too early. That could very well be the case. But we could not afford to lose both games. That is for sure to start this series. So let's see what happens here in game two. Again, we're still desperate to hand the Spurs their first loss of the postseason. We did outscore them 35-29 to in the first. And at halftime, we still had the lead. We were looking good. It was 68-58. to So we were up by 10. And now, decent little lead, 74 to 58, looking good after a strong start to the third. We'll see if that can keep up. And it's looking pretty good. End of the third, 104 to 82. Is that down to just a little bit better luck? Is that down to the, re uh, the reactionary changes to what happened in game one? Not entirely sure. The bottom line is that we have a good enough team that we should be able to win. Maybe those changes were what we needed. But this is a blowout victory here. In game two, on the road, that is a statement victory. If there ever was one, 139 to 102, your final. And this series is tied up at one game apiece. Darrell Arnold, 41 points, 7 assists, 3 steals. Absolute monster again. Dorikas, by the way, we dropped the minutes. 29 points that game, 9 rebounds. 3 blocks as well. Dorikas went off. Bohannon, 18 points, 10 assists. I mean, that's what we needed, right? Dorikas and Bohannon, if they step up, we're golden. That's exactly what happened. A.J. Marsh, my God, I love Dario Galo, but A.J. Marsh, that was the right idea, man. 18 points, 15 rebounds. Monster. Hopkins, 12 points and 9 rebounds. McDaniels roughed up with an injury, but 11 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Uh, McKinney, 5 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. And then Cato... Uh, the offensive production wasn't quite where you'd want it to be. I mean, you could see the shooting. It wasn't good by any stretch of the imagination. But the shooting percentage was high. I mean, 17 three-pointers to five is a big part of the reason. Fast break points, we had them beat, and we limited what they were able to do. Uh, they still beat us in terms of points in the paint, but that's not surprising by any stretch. Second chance points, though, still up there for them, and it makes me wonder about rebounding. Uh, we had 14 offensive rebounds. They had 11. It would be nice to limit that. Five blocks to nothing, 16 turnovers. I'm still thinking maybe some slight changes. Now, it's a bruised knee for McDaniels. And it'll be worth taking a look at just how much it's going to affect him. He's only down by one point. Now, it is, it is suggesting that we drop his minutes down to 16. I mean, the easy solution would be to swap he and McKinney, which, I gotta be honest, I mean, I, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> I think we're just going to run with McDaniels. I mean, as far as how much it's affecting him, that's the, uh, that's the real question. Let's take a look here. So, in terms of injury history, I mean, hasn't exactly been all that affected. Didn't mean to do that. Want to go all the way back, please. Thank you. So, I mean, he's 98% healed. He's not even that roughed up. So, he's definitely staying. The only change that I'm going to make is going back over to the uh, point of emphasis. And, again, in terms of 
in terms of defensive rebounding, let's just go all out. I mean, obviously, I would prefer us to be, you know, capitalizing on the fast break. But, I mean, right now, if we can shut down their transition game, we should be good to go. So it is game three, back home in Seattle. Let's see what happens. Again, the further changes to the strategies, the injury to Jesse McDaniels. He's 98% healthy, but will that injury affect him? Will he re-aggravate it? A couple of different questions heading into this. They have a five-point lead, 35-30 at the end of the first. They do get the opening two points as well, so currently up by seven. And we'll see what happens here heading into the half. And the answer is that we battled back very well, but still a five-point lead for the Spurs, and it's still neck and neck heading down the stretch here. And actually, we are tied as we hit a three-pointer to begin the fourth quarter. It's now 103-103. This is anybody's ball game here. Although we've seen before, tie game at the start of a quarter, anything can happen. Oh, God. Come on. Still neck and neck. Nobody scored for over a minute now. The defense is holding on strong. Spurs take the lead. They extend the lead. Can we get back into it? It's looking a little bit dire here. Down by one at this point. Up by two. Can we hold on? Yes, we can. A come-from-behind victory. Now, it shows time of possession. I wish we could see how long in that game we actually led for because it wasn't for all that long. Spurs, I mean, the Spurs had the lead for pretty much the entire game. But in the end, we hold on. Don't look now. We have a 2-1 series lead. 133-128, to your final score. Darrell Arnold, 39 points yet again. I mean, two rebounds, eight assists, four steals, six, I mean, six, just six turnovers. Who cares when he's doing that much offensively? Marsh, 23 points, seven rebounds. Bohannon, only 18 points, but helped out quite a bit. 16 points for Dorikas. Case in point, you know what's crazy, though? 133 points. It, it's kind of surprising, but everybody chipped in. I mean, you'd like to see Dorikis or Bohannon do a little bit more, but everybody chipped in offensively to help get the job done. Our shooting percentage was down. The difference, again, would have been in three-pointers. I mean, 20 made compared to their 15. Look at the difference, though. 44 attempts to 25, which is outrageous. Uh, the fast break, we could not limit this game. And, of course, they beat us in points in the paint as well, which is going to happen. And second chance points, they still beat us. So despite those changes, it's still not the performance I would have preferred to have seen, but we won. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of tough to say that we were wrong. Now again, in terms of offensive rebounding, we have it set up to limit transition, but it didn't, it didn't work in game three, yet we still won. So, that's that's a tough call as far as whether or not we keep it that. Again, defensive focus. I do want to say protect the paint. I don't want them to uh, have as many open shots, but... I mean, they're always going to outscore us in the paint regardless, but still, defensive aggression. Uh, still going to go with no preference. Although... It's just tough because I don't want anybody to necessarily get into foul trouble, which I feel like is likely with the physical advantage that they have down low. And I wouldn't want Dorikas to end up getting in, uh, in too much trouble. So it's kind of a tough call. I'm going to say neutral at least. You know, physical defense, screw it. And then defensive rebound, let's crash. We're going to leave it like that. I mean, it's, it's tough to make a change after winning a game, but some warning signs are there. Whether or not this is the, white, uh, the right way to approach it, or the white way, whatever. Whether or not this is the right way to approach it, who the hell knows? We will, uh, we will find out, though. It's game four. As Orlando and Vegas are tied at two games apiece, let's see how this goes down. And it wasn't a good uh, defensive start for us. But we do walk away with a 39-32 lead at the end of the first. Heading towards halftime, we're up by 10. Will that hold? 
It's looking good. And after outscoring them 29 to 25 in the second, we're up 68 57 at the half. So far, so good, but this game is far, far from over, knowing how good their offense is, although it's looking a little bit better, but my god, there's still so much time left. I don't know if we're going to be able to hold on, and just like that, yeah, the Spurs are right back in it. Big offensive outburst. They outscore us 23-19 to in the third, and right now, with 10 and a half minutes left, the lead is down to 8 and, oh man, right now it's not looking good. The offense is stalled out here in the second. It's a four-point game with under seven minutes to go. Can the defense hold on? Can the offense start bringing in a little bit more support? They have absolutely outplayed us in this half. It's down to a one-point lead. The Spurs take the lead. We do get it back. Under two minutes to go. One point lead for San Antonio. Make it three. A minute to go. We tie it. So, oh my god, they got the lead. We got it back. And we went it 108 to 107. Oh, we did not deserve that win. Oh my god, who's the hero? Who's the hero on that one? It's it's Darrell Arnold. 13 seconds left. He makes it. Tristan Thompson misses a layup. McDaniels gets the rebound, and that ended it. Thompson misses a layup at the buzzer. And we walk away with a one-point victory. Insane. We did not know. We didn't deserve that. But that is a backbreaker. We now have a 3-1 to one series lead on the Spurs. Crazy. Arnold, 34 points, 22 for Bohannon, 21 for Marsh, 15 with 10 rebounds for Dorikas, 9 points for Cato, 3 for McKinney, uh, only 3 points for McDaniels, but 10 rebounds. So, I mean, he had a god awful shooting night. Just abysmal. And then Hopkins, 1 point in 20 minutes played, 3 rebounds. Didn't even take a shot. He was 1 for 2 in terms of field goals, so or free throws, I should say. In terms of the numbers here, I mean, again, live by the three, die by the three is what we've been doing, and it worked out there. Fast break points, and neither team had that going. Points in the paint, we actually outscored them for once in that regard, which is insane to me. Uh, 14 offensive rebounds, though. That was the difference in terms of why it would have been as close as it was. Biggest lead was 18, and we blew it, nearly blew it. We do still walk away with the victory. Absolutely insane. And we are one game away from the final, which doesn't seem possible. Unfortunately, I'm going to be making a change here. I don't trust McDaniels right now due to injury. We're going to be giving McKinney the start in this next game. I want to take a look at Dorikas' numbers here as well, just to see how he's been doing. And it's it's still tough. We're going to bounce those numbers back up. I think that'll be the best way to handle it. And I don't feel like Cato's been as effective. Yeah, he hasn't been since we bumped up those minutes. So let's, uh, let's get Dorikas back up there. Let's get Bohannon back up there. And see how that goes. And we'll hope for the best. And in terms... Of any strategies here again. I mean, we still have the shoot at will transition, which is, I mean, or the shoot at will tempo, which is the best way to go. In terms of offensive rebounding, I, I do want to limit transition, but it'd be. The problem is we don't have that many. I want to say we don't have that many amazing rebounders, but you look at what we did last game. I mean, Marsh, in terms of rebounding, has been on point. Dorikas as well at times, McDaniels and Hopkins. I'm just wondering if, from an offensive standpoint, it's worth going after, you know what, I think we're going to be aggressive in this next game and we're going to go for the kill, whether that's the right way to go or not. Uh, defensive focus, uh, we're still going to go no preference. Physical defense, I'm a little bit afraid of, so we're going to go no preference. And then defensive rebounding. Uh, we are we're gonna go for it. We're gonna care a little bit more about possession, a little bit more emphasis on rebounding. 
and we're gonna see how that goes. I'm a little bit nervous about those changes, but we're gonna go for it and see if we can beat them on the boards, which is, or on the boards on the glass, and we're gonna see if it goes for the, you know, if it works out for us, as Orlando is now one win away. As are we. Can we end this series right here and right now? Can we punch our ticket to the final? We outscored them 28-21 in the first, currently up 32-23. And we'll see if that offensive outburst can continue. Outscored them by five in the second, currently up 62-48 to here. As we are just perhaps moments away from going to the final, although San Antonio yet again battling back as you would expect them to do. We are still outscoring them. It's a 20-point game heading into the fourth. And unless we blow it, we are golden. The Seattle Sonics have pulled off what I thought to be the near impossible. We are 1 minute and 39 seconds away from beating San Antonio in five games. And here we go. Oh, we're going to enjoy every moment of this one. Just over a minute and a half left. Now here's Shut him down, Defense Arnold. Right there. Shut him down. Walker. It's Walker. His amazing hair. You got to love. Look at this shutdown defense. Just Shoot nothing. Run a six. play. There you go. Get something. That big miss. A big ball. rebound for Dorikas. Finds Arnold. See if we can get anything going here. To knock those down. And again, we don't even have to. More, you can say, guys. It's Beautiful. The the Look at Dorikas out on the point. Ball. Trying to work the pick. I like it. Arnold final. taking everybody on. Yeah. And he misses. I don't think we've seen Darrell Arnold actually sink a shot. I mean, One like minute to go. And we end up fouling A.J. Marsh's fourth. Not a big deal, though. Murray Hopkins. And That's company are on with 57 Up seconds to go. Brought to you by Reese's Puffs. Reese's Puffs. Oh, man. It is Murray right side. It is just Thompson sinking in that this team is making it to the final. Thompson One the year after we make nice it to the playoffs for the very first time. Once again off the mark by San well, Wesley's actually in. Son Seattle of a bitch. One year after we make it to the playoffs the for the very first time. And we blow it. Look at Torres Torres getting time too. What a guy. We make it to the playoffs for the first time when we blow it. We get swept by LeBron and the Lakers. And now, here we are. Thanks to a new playoff format or not. Oh my god, Murray almost, that was almost a really sweet play. It is our ball actually. Murray Hopkins, ladies and gentlemen. What a beast. One year later, new playoff format or not, we beat the Cavs. We beat the Jazz, who gave us trouble all year long in terms of oh, Davidson buckets. <laughs> Beautiful. The Jazz gave us trouble all year long. We beat them in six. And then we go up against the number one team in the league, in the San Antonio Spurs. And we beat them in five. Shot at the buzzers, no good. We will play either Orlando or Vegas in the final, but MVP Darrell Arnold leads the way. From day one, this was their goal. Make it to the finals, but really, this is just the beginning for them. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly, and you know they'll take a moment to, to kind of bask in victory here, but but it won't oh. be a long one. They We're basking. Got a very tough opponent coming for them. We're they basking in victory. To get straight to business. We just to took out the number one team in the league. You bet, you sweet ass. We're enjoying this one. West. Holy, what are with the, the flash bulbs, man? This isn't the WWF in 1999. Stop, Stop it. Smith and the rest of Stone Cold ain't posing on the ropes. This Cut is it out. Kevin saying thanks for watching. So long. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. It's not the trophy we want, but hopefully it's the first of many. So we take a look here. Darrell Arnold, 30 points, 12 assists, absolute monster. A.J. Marsh, 26 points, 13 rebounds, absolute monster. 11 points for McDaniels, just 9 for Dorikas, but 12 rebounds. Bohannon, 
Eight points. Only eight points, but we were still able to just wipe the floor with them in this game. Hopkins, 6.7 rebounds. McKinney, only five points. Cato with five points. And then Davidson, Wesley, Torres, they were able to play. Poor Nash and poor Sparks, unable to play. But we do get the job done. We're going to the final, as outrageous as that is. It's absolutely beautiful. The question is, who are we taking on in the final? We will see in one second because I want to recap what we've done up to this point. And I mean, the players that have led the way, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, Darrell Arnold's averaging 32 points a game here in the playoffs. Nearly 10 assists. You look at Marsh, who has just developed into an unreal player. Bohannon, Dorikas, despite the injury. McDaniels as well. This team has been something else. And I, I am so excited to see whether or not we're going to be able to get the job done. The question is, though, who's it going to be? And the answer is Orlando. We've seen them in the finals before. Will they stop this team of destiny from accomplishing their goal? We will find out in the next episode. Until then, have a good one. Take it easy. I'll see you then. And don't forget, leave a like on the video or I will threaten you with physical violence.